Jesse Holly is back. <laughs> What's up, man? What's going on? You know, same old, same old. Can we start with some Dallas Cowboys? Yeah. Why not? America's team. All right. Um, Everybody wants to hear about the Cowboys. Definitely. <laughs> Michael Parsons. Did you think he would be this good this soon? How do you feel about his ceiling after year one? Have we seen a player like him before, someone that can flip inside, outside, and D-line? I don't think anyone saw that coming, Micah Parsons. I mean, you, you knew you were getting a good player, and this is a kid who set out all the last season because of COVID. Um, and the Cowboys wanted a, a cornerback at that pick, you know, but J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertan got, got, got swapped up early on, and so you kind of fell to the next available guy on your list, and it turned out to be phenomenal. I think Micah Parsons, in addition to what Dan Quinn is as a coach, was a perfect marriage. So no one expected, no one, I, honestly, like no one, you hope, you hope. There is no metric there is no analytics that's going to tell you that, hey, we're going to plug in this rookie who didn't play last year, and he's going to be all pro. There's nothing that says that. But he came in, and he and, 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 and Dan Quinn, they clicked. And, and when you go back in history, there are, there are players and coaches who just click. And you're able to find out things about them. And the Cowboys, due to injuries and other situations, found out, oh, by the way, we got this young guy who can play linebacker, but he can also play defensive end. And one of the guys who I compared him to, um, you know, everyone wants to go the, the Lawrence Taylor route. I don't. I don't. I, I reserve that conversation for down the road. And plus, LT's a Tar Heel. So, you know, I'm a Tar Heel. We got to make sure we, we, we preserve our Tar Heels. You know, we, we're so quick to want to goat everybody. I looked at, I looked at Darius Leonard from, from the Colts. Uh, he's a guy who's, who's, who's long, who's rangy. I think Micah's exceptionally faster than he is, but a tackling machine, Darius Leonard is, and an, an, an aggressive young athlete who uh, was Pro Bowl, first team all pro. I mean, he was, uh, I think he was even defensive rookie of the year. I believe he was. Um, but I look at those type of players right there, but his ceiling, to keep it in the Tar Heels theme, his, his ceiling is the roof. Like, there is no ceiling for him. There is no ceiling for him. The best thing that happened to Micah Parsons is that Dan Quinn came back, that Dan Quinn didn't depart and go get a head coaching job, and now they can take that relationship to the next level. My only concern is, is that Micah, like a lot of players have done in the past, they don't fall into the glitz and glams of being a Dallas Cowboy. A lot of people come here with the intention to be a football player, and then the glitz and glam of being the Dallas Cowboys happen to you and that changes your hunger. Uh, so, you know, being uh, a, a guy who you want to stay and keep hungry, there, there, aren't, there aren't many guys on this football team who have the mentality of Micah Parsons. Well, I wanted to ask you, do you think that that sack rate is, is uh, sustainable from the, if he moves, if he even plays more linebacker? You know, it's a, it's a fluid thing. Um, because now the one thing that people have on him now is film. And when you go back and you watch the playoff game against the Niners, the Niners sacrificed George Kittle and said, you may not be a big target for pass catching today, but what we need is an athletic, willing blocker. Now, when I say blocker, I'm not talking about pancake blocks. I'm not talking about put him in the ground and run him over. I'm not talking about that. Get in his way. Get in his way. Are you fast enough, agile enough, athletic enough to get in his way? If you go back and you watch that 49ers game, they used George Kittle a lot. They used Brandon Ayuk. I mean, they were using receivers, and it wasn't that they, they were blocking him. They were getting in his way. They were, they were selling out enough to where they were saying, we just want to make him have to run the hump or take another direction or go another route, just not giving him a free run to – the, to, to, to the ball carrier and they were effective in it while he still had some really good plays for the most part they were still able to effectively run the football um, and the, the also the thing is that next year this football team will change 
You may not have the two bookend pass rushers. You may not have some other guys in front of you. You may not have some other guys on the back end. So all of that stuff changes over time. Uh, for Micah, if the sack record continues great, uh, for him, it, it's just being an anchor in the middle of that defense and, and, and allowing his, his mindset of what you saw this year to kind of permeate throughout the locker room. Because I think it's more, you have more players, offensively and defensively, who are quote unquote Hollywood, than blue collar like a Micah Parsons. You, I, we, we need a little bit more blue collar, serious about football players than we do the Hollywoods. That makes sense.